Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Harris, and this is Life Questions, a program that looks at life's many issues from a biblical perspective. We're glad you joined us for what promises to be an interesting discussion. I would like to first thank our viewers, you all out there, for the interesting and timely questions about life that many of you have sent us each week. We appreciate your thoughtful inquiries about life. They have actually become the fuel that keeps this program going, along with insightful perspectives that our clergy panel members are bringing to the table, and they're here to share their biblical insights today, and I'd, I'd like for you to meet them. First of all, we have Pastor Chris Langstaff of Bell Center Church of Christ, followed by Pastor Kelly Waltz of Spencerville Trinity United Methodist, then there's Pastor Darwin Dunton of Mount Tabor Church of God, Salina. And rounding off our panel today is Pastor Jeremy Thompson of Paulding Nazarene, uh, Nazarene Church. We're happy to have you all with us today. And I'm going to start by reading off uh, some of the questions that we've received from the viewers. This first question here, I asked God to show me he is real, but I feel I am not getting any answers. I'm frustrated. I've been praying about a difficult situation for a long time and can't understand why God doesn't want to help me. I find myself wondering if he's really real or if I have just been believing lies all these years. That's a loaded, powerful one. I need to go get a cup of coffee. I'll, I'll, be, right, I'll be right back. What sayest thou, gentlemen and lady? Sometimes I think we approach God with our prayers with expectations of what we would like God to do. Instead of taking our concerns to Him and being open to what His plan is, because we know that God answers all prayers. He may say yes, He may say no, He may say wait, or I've got a better plan. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want what necessarily His better plan is. And so maybe because she is or he is so narrow in their focus as to how they want the prayer answered, they're missing out on how God is truly answering their prayer. Mm -hmm. Wow, and it, something here, I, I feel if, uh, I can't try to understand why God doesn't want to help me. Um, that I think is probably the core issue. Mm -hmm. um, God does want to help. We, we read in Romans, Paul writes that all things work for the good mm -hmm. of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Right. And part of that all things includes the bad things, the challenging things. And I mean, I'm, I'm 54 years old. I've, mm -hmm. I've had some, some life experience. Going through these issues at the time is never pleasant. Yeah. However, now that we, we go through these issues and we come through on the other side, we can go back and say, yeah, God was right there with me all the time. Very rarely do we ever get that big, that big answer in the sky, yeah. or, or very rarely do we ever get that instant confirmation. But as we go through these things, and, and I think you're, you, to your point of the different ways that God answers prayers and, and deals with those prayers, when we go through it, it'll all make sense. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it won't. Yeah. Sometimes we will never know why we go through a challenging situation, but we have to trust that, that it will work out mm -hmm. for his glory mm -hmm. and for our good. And I think, you know, we live in this world and it's a world uh, we can have our needs met immediately in so many different ways that we come to expect that in everything. Mm -hmm. Like somebody said, making God your ATM machine or something. Or a vending machine, God. Vending like machine? I put in my money, push the right buttons, and I get what uh, I want. I don't think that's a really good theologically sound perspective on who God is and how he works. And I think it's just interesting that, that I think if you were to ask somebody, when did you grow the most in your walk with God? When did you grow the most in your spiritual life? Most often they would point back to times of difficulty, hmm. of suffering. Mm -hmm of that's when I felt like God was the closest was in that time. And I think we, we think God should just give us butterflies and puppies and unicorns all the time. And life was never promised that it would always work out the way that we hoped or that we wanted. But we, he did promise us that he would be with us in the midst of whatever we go through. Pastor Dunn, you chime in? Well, 
You know, I, I'm, I'm reminded of that. Uh, was a BC cartoon that was out uh, a number of years ago. It's not anymore, but you know, you have these cavemen, and he's saying, "God, give me a sign. God, give me a sign." Okay. <clears throat> a sign. And it just came right down. There's a sign right there for you. Uh, two thoughts. You know, where is God in all this, and you know, wh where can I see God? Well, I just say, go out and look. I mean, you know, look at the skies. Look at the heavens. The heavens declare the glory of God. I mean, you can see mm -hmm. that. But uh, I also come back, and I, I, I think we look at things so micro versus macro, mm -hmm. because micro is our world, but macro mm -hmm. is the world. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I look at what's happening in Afghanistan right now, and the Christians there, oh. and, and, and the persecution mm -hmm. that's happening there. Why, God, did you, are you allowing this? And then you start hearing reports coming out how the church has gone underground, how the, the, the evangel. Uh, Mm -hmm. Afghanistan is still it's number four. Is number four. Exploding. Christianity is explore, exploding because they're seeing how the Muslims are treating each other. And um, then you hear you know, statements about how we feel the, the presence of Almighty God. I think some of these uh, uh, churches in some of these persecuted countries put us to shame. <laughs> okay, I know I got awful just a little bit, but I mean, you got to look at the macro mm -hmm. uh, versus the micro. Why? You know, I, I joke, I'm in Salina, Ohio. I've been there for four years, and we've had three tornadoes go through, <laughs> through the area. It's like, wow. you know, everybody mm. stays away from me, you know. <laughs> I used to be in Finley, Ohio, when they had all the floods. Oh, so yeah. I'm the problem. I'm finding that out. <laughs> so why did God allow that? The, the one person that was killed in, in, in Salina was a deep, devout Christian. Really? And uh, mm. he just wanted to go home to be with Jesus, and a, and a tornado went through his house. I mean... Uh, how, how do you how do you explain? I can't, but we have to just trust that God is working everything mm -hmm. to the culmination of the age, and you're part of that cog. You're not the entire cog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, my wife had brain surgery uh, uh, 11 years ago. I mean, we had to take a tumor off her brain, and we didn't know if she was going to make it or not. You know, we were praying and praying and praying. And, and yet that was used in our church to bind our church mm -hmm. together. And uh, we saw things come out of that that we never thought possible. Um, so I, I know I kind of gave a big, long speech on that. But I mean, but um, there are times we just don't know. And we just have to trust. But yet God is there. Well, let me ask you a question that um, that's somewhat related to the one that I started out with. Um, how does God speak? Someone I know said God only speaks through the Bible. When I suggested that God also speaks through prayer, he told me that prayer isn't talking to God, so he doesn't speak that way. I'm really just confused by this. I thought that prayer was a way for God to speak to us. Obviously, these are people that are reaching out. They, they, they want help in some areas. I think that, you know, it's interesting. I had a a kid in my youth group and then he went to college and came back and was like, I just don't feel God anymore. Like, how do I hear or how do I know what God's doing? And, and I feel like that we, we do kind of um, box God in and say, you've got to speak like this through the Bible or through prayer. But it's interesting. Um, in Matthew 25, Jesus says, if you want to find me, go give a, a cup of water to somebody who's thirsty and invite the stranger in. And and be a part of the, the poor and the oppressed, like that's where you'll find me because when you're doing it mm -hmm. for those, mm -hmm. you're doing it to me. And so I think that we pigeonhole God, box God in and say he can only speak through the Bible or through prayer. And I think he speaks through the Bible and through prayer. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes people get stuck and they're like, I'm just not hearing. I'm like, well then go serve somebody. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of serving, I think what you're gonna find out is God's gonna do something in your heart and in your life. Mm -hmm. And then I think it is important to have some spiritual disciplines to, to go along with that. It's not an either or. I think right. it's this both and. But a lot of times we just want to sit and sing songs around a campfire. And that's good. But we do it to the neglect of finding God amongst the people that he told us in Scripture that he would be among. However, yeah. you know, God does speak through prayer. I've yeah. had God yeah. speak to me on directions of my life. It's been rare and few and far between, yeah. but... Yeah. It does not supersede his word. Mm -hmm. sure. And I, I can't emphasize that enough because if God tells me I'm to go out and rob a bank, well, guess what? That supersedes his word. Or through prayer, I'm supposed to do this, this, this. That does not. 
you know, and, and as pastors, we've had this many times. People come up and they'll say, well, God spoke to me and said that I'm supposed to do this. Hmm. Well, that went against his word. Hmm. What, what he told you to do goes against his word. I mean, I've had, and you have too, I've had people come up to me and say, I know it was God's will that I move in with this person and, and, and do this because that's God's will. I know it. Hmm. It's against his word. Mm -hmm. And I know God is happy with me doing that. That's against his word. What's, what's the issue here? What don't we understand? So I, I always say that his word is the filter. And the prayers go through, everything goes through the filter of his word. And if the filter says no, that takes precedence over any feeling we might have. Sure. I was listening to a sermon on, uh, on the radio a while back and... Um, the pastor said that, that prayer is a, is a dialogue between you and God, but the problem is a lot of times when we pray, we're the ones that do all the talking. That's not a dialogue, that's a lecture. <laughs> and, and something that, that I'm speaking of spiritual disciplines, I'm something I'm trying to cultivate in my own life is just, God says, be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. And in our world today where we are constantly on the go, there's, there's so much going on, it's difficult for us to just be still and, and just meditate, just be quiet before God. And, and that's the times where I think we'll feel him and we'll, do I believe that God still audibly speaks today? No, I don't, I don't necessarily subscribe to that. However, when we be quiet and allow God to communicate with us, he will. And I think that may very well be something that, that this person might want to think about. You know, yes, God wants us to bring our requests and our needs to him, absolutely. But he also wants us to just relax mm -hmm. and, and just take a time out and let him be. I mean, just think about all the ways God spoke in the Bible, through a bush, through a donkey, through a handwriting on the wall, through a parted sea. It wasn't just through the scripture reading. He spoke through all kinds of crazy ways that, that if they had said, well, it's not in this, and this is the only way God can speak. That's why he's like, Moses, I'm here. Like, wake up, a, a stairway. Like, so there's just in scripture so many ways that God speaks to his people. Yeah. Before we go to yeah. break, you wanna chime in, Pastor Long? Yeah, I had an experience before. I knew God, but I hadn't made that commitment of accepting Jesus as my Savior and Lord. I'd gotten angry at God, didn't want anything to do with God. One year, staff meeting before start of the school year, I was looking out over 100 plus people trying to figure out who was new. And I saw this person and clearly in my mind came this thought, that's going to be your best friend. And I'm like, what? what? And so, see, that was nudging from God, I believe, mm -hmm. because then I pursued it, acted on it. She was teaching in my building. We became friends. She was a solid Christian witness to me through her actions, how she lived her life, prayed for me for 10 years. <laughs> and then a trial in my life, I had to have emergency surgery. Mm. She gave me this cross after to remind me someone was watching over me. And so I go back to that very event that it started with where that thought came into my mind, that's going to be your best friend. We've been friends for wow. 35 years. How about that? That's, that's excellent. Amazing. Well, listen, we're going to take a break and appreciate all that you're, uh, say, uh, all that you're saying today. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I'd like to uh, take up another question from a viewer who says that they are a parent trying to witness about Christ to the daughter, but the daughter wants to hear nothing about Christianity. We'll take that issue up right after this. Don't go away. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. Well, glad you could stay with us and we're back with our panel of experts 
And so we're moving forward here. <laughs> why, why the snickering? Experts. <laughs> Another question here from our viewers um, who writes in, our daughter is raising her children and she doesn't seem to have any interest in Christian things. This is very difficult to watch happen. How can I be a good witness when she doesn't even want me talking about God? We, you, you want us to start off wow. taking that? Isn't that a tough one? Had a pick on me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I understand, I think, where the, the question is coming from. Um, I, I think it is possible to, to be uh, a godly witness mm -hmm. and not overtly discuss Christianity. Um, constantly reminding, I'm guessing her, you know, her grandchildren, constantly re reminding them of how much they're loved. Um, constantly being a positive influence um, in allowing them, you know, what kind of music they listen to, what kind of books they read, what kind of movies they watch. Um, and, and I'm guessing that um, the daughter here, the, the mom of the children, um, maybe she was a believer, maybe, maybe she's surrendered her faith, you know, it, it's hard to tell, but there's, don't, don't neglect your ministry to your daughter either. Mm. Um, if that is indeed the fact that she, maybe she was a believer mm -hmm. uh, and she's had a crisis of faith, um, don't, don't neglect her either. Yes, still care for the grandbabies. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. I've got a couple of my own uh, that I would do anything for, um, but, but I would be curious as to, as to what happened um, and, and still be able to, to balance her wishes because you, you don't want to alienate your daughter. You don't want to make her upset by overtly discussing right. Christianity if she's forbidding it. Um, because then, you know, she might withdraw completely, sure. uh, and that, that's, that's no good. So, um, I, I would, I would tell, uh, this person, um, pray about it, uh, pray unceasingly about it, pray that, that God would give her an opportunity to begin to, to, to share those things and that, that God would soften her heart. Uh, that's another thing I think sometimes we forget about. Is, is praying that God would soften the heart of people that we talk to. Um, it's very difficult to plant a seed in ground that's compact and, and, and tamped down, um, but God has an amazing way of, of breaking through that rough soil yes, and, and allowing His Word and, and, uh, and the, the seeds to, to take root. So uh, spend a lot of time in prayer. If, if I was counseling this person, spend a lot of time in prayer. Uh, don't give up on your daughter. Uh, as much as her actions may uh, may cause you pain, um, and uh, and just mention uh, mention these principles as you can. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I think um, you have to realize it's not your job to save the, your granddaughter. It's the Holy Spirit's job. And I think that there's a, a passage that I heard a really interesting interpretation of that I thought was kind of cool but it's the passage about throwing pearls to pigs. And the guy was saying, don't try, to, sometimes you have to trust the Holy Spirit. And if you're just keep throwing pearls to pigs, they will turn and devour you and reject what it is that you are trying to give them. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that too often we think if we just say it differently or just say it again, or just say it louder, say it louder <laughs> and more forceful and, that that's what it's going to be. And I think that we got to be careful, once again, not to throw pearls to pigs, but to give room for the Holy Spirit to... And, but then I think the opposite can be true. Sometimes we just shower them with love as a form of manipulation that maybe if I just give them more things and, and do this. And so I think you have to be who God's calling you to be in the moment, in the situation. If, he fe if you feel he's leading you to say something... But at the end of the day, you have to trust that it's the Holy Spirit's job to draw people to, to God, not, not yours. And I think it's also this person's taking on all the responsibility, like they've got to do it, they've got to do it. And how often do we take control and we want to fix it, we want to take care of, 
we're called to love, love God, love others, mm -hmm. but maybe it's part of God's plan that someone else is going to enter into this person's life to bring about the change. Because sometimes we can shut down um, immediately somebody else, you know. But if it's God brings it to us at a different way through a different person, we may be a little bit more open to listen because it's about relationships. So if somebody else God uses establishes a relationship and that person then is more open with them and more willing, so maybe it's not this person's responsibility to do what God is going to do, but it's going to be through somebody else. Mm -hmm. Pastor, you're the only one that haven't chimed in recently. <laughs> well, uh, there, 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 there's so much here that I don't know in, in right. this question. That's, yeah. that's the hard part. That's why I'm, I'm struggling. Uh, you know, it says our daughter. Well, it doesn't talk about a husband. So is there a husband in there? Mm -hmm. is, is he the one that's uh, moving her away? Was there something going on bef you know, before she had the children? I mean, there's just so Some much here. Um, I kind of took it a different way of uh, focusing on the grandkids, if, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think grandparents don't understand the, the, the value and the, the, the influence that they have on their grandchildren. And they're oh, yeah. still young. Yeah. They haven't experienced as much in life as adults. Right, and, and some of the, you know, there's, there's a number of people in my life that have really f helped form me spiritually, and one of them was my grandparents. Mm -hmm. my, my dad didn't go to church. He, he, I mean, he even threatened us one time, if you go to church, I won't be here when you come back. He eventually, you know, turned around Good. but um you know before he died but um but that's but it was my grandparents right. that that yeah. really in, in, inspired me so you know, i wrote down here hey can can you take the kids to church will she allow that mm -hmm. um can you read bible stories to them when they're at your house mm -hmm. uh, can you of course pray with them um, when they're when they're at your house so there's there's a lot that you can do and like I said, I, I, I focused on the grandkids because that's the part of life I'm in right now. So, uh, that, and, and there, there are parents, even in my church, grandparents in my church that are bringing their grandkids. Right. Yeah. I don't know what I'd do without my grandmother because she was the major influence in my life. My parents did not go to church, mm -hmm. but I went to the church where my grandmother went and uh, she would talk to me about the Lord. She'd sit me on her knee and talk to me about the mm -hmm. Lord. And wow. as I, even when I became a teenager, I remembered those things. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Grandparents, I think, sometimes uh, underestimate the influence yeah. that Absolutely. they can have. You know? And we need to remember the body of Christ. We are a family, and sure. there's lots of different families, members that can help. Yeah. In. I mean, I mean, is she babysitting your grandkids? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's an opportunity, there. an opportunity there is. There. Well, she doesn't want to talk to me when we talk to my grandkids about Jesus when she's at my house. Uh, this is my house. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, get them away, take them a ride for a ride to get I mean, ice cream, and then talk to no, them. No, no. What I mean is, you want me to babysit them, but they're in my house. It's my rules. And I mean, I think sometimes we are so afraid to turn them off. Uh, that we don't talk about it. But at the same time, I've seen people who've talked about it so much they have turned people off. I mean, yeah. so it, it is a balance. Mm -hmm. um, and the kids may open the doors. If the kids hear from a friend or something, mm -hmm. they may want, have questions, and then that could open the door for the grandparent to share yeah. that initiated. I do a mentoring program, and we're not allowed to bring up religion or anything, but at the school, if the child Mm -hmm. And so when the child asks, what do you do? I said, well, I'm a pastor at a church. That's answering a question. And then that child, he has asked other questions. Uh -huh. That opens the door for yeah. me to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't discount the power of veggie tales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's true. That's so true. There are great cartoons, but yes. boy, do they have a great message. A lot of resources out there that can be used. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes we're afraid to use them. Yeah. And uh, I, a lot of thoughts going on with my brain right now regarding this, but <laughs> I, I just think there's just so much more. I, if she was here, I'd be asking a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. so, right. so. Okay, well, we'll move on. Here, here's another question that uh, came in. Why, we've got so little time to deal with on this, I'll, I'll warn you. Does God like it that the, the different religions are fighting? Does God like that? No. 
There simple you go. answer. That's no. a simple no. Okay. Next and question. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me expand that then for the for the viewer. Why would there be this infighting among different uh, religious groups? It doesn't say just Christian. It says religious groups. Mm -hmm. Why would there be that infighting? Is it insecurity because one group feels that well this Christian group over here or this uh, religious group over here is outshining us and we gotta gotta counter that or? Well, why is there infighting among religious well, groups? We like to think we're right and everybody else is wrong. Right. Um, but of course, when you, when you discuss the nuances between the different religions that we have in this world, um, obviously not everybody can be right. Mm -hmm. um, the Bible tells us that there's one way to the Father and that's through Jesus Christ, His mm -hmm. Son. And there, there are an awful lot of religions. There, there are many, many different religions that are, uh, that are in our world today. And the, the tendency, I think, to get very defensive, mm -hmm. um, because again, what we believe is right. And, and we're, in our church, we're doing a Bible study through the book of John. And it's very easy to be critical of the Pharisees now listen, they did a lot of things that there is criticism mm. to be had there. Mm -hmm. However, at the end of the day, they thought they were doing God's will. In essence, they were with their, with their hatred and persecution of Jesus, all leading up to the cross, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but these, these people were doing what they felt God's will called them to do, even though they were misguided. So I, I think that's kind of a microcosm of, of the, the battling between different religions. Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot to be said for tolerance. Um, however, when religion A wants to kill all non-believers in their religion, it's, it's difficult to be tolerant Our of that. Yes. It, it's, it's very challenging. Um, I mean, even here, even right here, we, we have, we're from four different denominations. Mm -hmm. We do things a little bit differently, right. okay? We, we still worship the same Jesus. We, we still love the same God. We just might do things a mm -hmm. little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. That's certainly not a bad thing. But I think, I, I think maybe if, if I could read into a little bit what the, what the, the question is really asking mm -hmm. is we're, we're pitting different theological beliefs, radically different theological beliefs, mm -hmm among each other and something's got to give. Okay. Something has to give. Very well put, very well put. Thank you very much. Well, we're out of time. So if you are sitting on the edge of your seat ready to answer that question, we can always carry it over to the next program. <laughs> but we want to thank you for your input and certainly I'm sure that your comments have been able to help somebody in our viewing audience today. And by the way, we'll be back again uh, next week at this same time with this same panel. We will be able to continue our discussion and we'd like for you to hang in there until next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.